Hi, I'm Rhys. That's Nathan. This is our special guest today, Matthew from Movies and Milk. Let's get down to it. Uh, I just want to thank uh, Rhys and Nathan for inviting me on the show. I'm not much of a tech You're welcome. guy. <laughs> not much of a tech guy myself, but uh, I might learn a thing or two from this channel. Yes, you will. Uh, I might do. Yes. Also, we're... also, we'll learn as well because you, yes. you know a lot more of the videography side of, of movies and stuff like that. So it's kind of collaboration. Also cool. Though. If you don't know Matthew, he studied things like this. Mm -hmm. Broadcasting. Yes, <laughs> broadcast production. <laughs> yes. Uh, also, graduated. Well done. Thank graduated. You. Uh, well done. Well, well, um, we are going to feature his channel on our, or our channel if you ever get interested in learning about movies and stuff and if you're interested in movies at all. Movies and Milk, it's going to be on our features. I also have just a personal page where I upload my short films. Matthew Coleman. Can I ask a question? Why Movies and Milk? Uh, talk about movies it was Michael's milk. idea, but I like milk in movies, and he likes movies. He, he's, he likes milk as well, but no, he's a big fan. But you of love milk? I love milk. Let's get down to business. Today we're going to be talking about Star Wars. Star Wars. Disney there. You see it? Disney here as well. Oh. And our new series called Movie Tech. Where we're going to start with Star Wars and then we'll move into other movies like Tron. This week we're going to talk about the... We'll do Star Wars over two weeks. So this week we'll do the Star Wars originals. And then we'll do the new movies, the uh, sequels and prequels. And some take in there. The Star Wars originals have mostly take that kind of carries out through, throughout the whole of the rest of the films. So we'll, there's going to be a lot in this one. Um, maybe next week we'll talk more in depth about some of the new things coming up. Lightsabers. Everybody wants to know what a lightsaber is. How far we are away from actually being ready to use them and make them and actually have a working lightsaber. So, if you're familiar with the Star Wars universe, if you go back far enough, what like Jedi's obviously they discovered the lightsaber and the kyber crystals and stuff, but before they used, before they had the technology to make it into a single hilt lightsaber, they used these things called proto-sabers, mm -hmm. which was like, you had your hilt still, but it was attached to this really thick cable, and it was attached to a belt, it had this big case on them, which had the kyber crystal in it, and that's how they, they powered up the lightsaber. These were precursors to the, the, the actual lightsabers. They were big, bulky, but they were still powerful enough to be used by, by the Jedi. Obviously they would have been used in a different way, so the fighting style would be a lot different, a lot slower, a lot more limbered. But proto sabers are actually a real thing now. Um, thanks to YouTube channel Hacksmith, um, the guys have actually made a real working proto saber. So I will... Um, I'll link them in the description below, um, just to show you what um, what the actual what it looks like and how they built it and uh, and all the ins and outs of that because they've they've also made a full video on it. But it's really interesting to see that we're now like if we're in proto sables now in the Star Wars universe that was like a couple hundred years before mm. they discovered the technology to make actual lightsabers. So if the timeline is anything similar to Earth, so yeah, so you never know. Mm -hmm. uh, we could be coming on for that. There has been improvements. There has been leaps forward. An actual lightsaber technology? Yes. Wow. Called plasma blades. Okay. That's photonic matter. I don't exactly know the exact signs, and if I was talking about it, it'd probably <coughs> bore the life out of you. Right, so with this, with the plasma blade, it's also like really, really, really hot as well. So to actually get it working, you'd need like a magnetic force field so that it wouldn't burn your hands off. And at the same time, it doesn't come up like a lightsaber, like goes, it doesn't do that either. So you'd need some sort of material within it. People have been talking about ceramics because it takes a lot to... Um, that's uh, that's what I was going to say about the proto saber. They used a, a, an alloy, a type of alloy, that can burn at 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 degrees right, okay. without melting. Mm -hmm. and it's just, it's just trying to get that mm -hmm. to come out of the hilt in a way that looks like... Mm -hmm. yep. And then it kind of glowing at the same time. So they've still got all that to go, but they're all... They're, they're, at a place where they could, obviously they're always going to keep making advancements, but mm -hmm. I mean, they've, they've got the kind of basics of it. I mean, the, cool. the great the thing is, they just kind of pass it through each other. Yeah. It's going to be uh, the, the great thing about uh, about science fiction is normally it's guys like us that are kind of geeky, and, they, and, and normally the kind of geeky guys end up becoming the world breaking scientists mm. that have got the knowledge to build stuff like this. Mm. So like, I mean, I mean that, that, yeah. that, that's where all these scientists are getting the ideas is from mm. science fiction movies. Yeah, that, that, that's, I mean, that's where it's all Science fiction is the precursor to science fact. Because you know, this is, this is going off, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is going off topic here into a different star fighting movie, Star oh Trek. Oh my no, God. God! No, God, please, no, no! No! No!
I need to. <laughs> this is it. Just to, just to, <laughs> just to follow up on my comment, okay? Uh, so, like I said, science fiction is the precursor to science fact. Mm -hmm. um, the flip phone was developed through Star Trek, so obviously they're... Oh, like, boop, boop, boop. Yep. The little... <laughs> Captain's log! Captain's log, start at 23.9, round it off to the nearest decimal point. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so um, because of um, some guy who decided oh, mm -hmm. their communication devices have to flip, mm -hmm. um, the flip phone was invented. Uh, I and like the sliding doors, the automatic sliding doors. Slight, like automatic that. sliding doors, that's all from science science fiction, yeah. Um sorry so back to Star Wars, yeah. Yeah, no, so no, is that's what we're talking about. Is that how you've come to Plasma well, Blades? That, that's how I came to in Plasma Blades. I'll put a link in the description and you can you can read through the whole thing, all the science behind mm -hmm. it and where exactly where they are and stuff like that. Um so you can see that for yourself. Awesome. So next on to our special guest. Yes. Um as I said at the start of the film, Matthew studied broadcast production. Broadcast production is, um, yeah. at the University of West of Scotland. Mm -hmm. uh, he is very clued up on things. <laughs> 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 things to do with, electronic things to do with the movie world and yes. such. Um, so he's going to be talking about. I'll, let, I'll just let him get to it. If anyone's ever seen Star Wars, you will be very, very well aware of the opening credits. Long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Mm -hmm. Yada, yada. Bang. Right into it. Right into the wee scroll. Mm -hmm. yep. and it's almost the like character it. itself. Yep. Really into yeah, it, it is. It is. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's probably the thing that everyone looks forward to. Looks forward to at the start. See, yeah. see I remember when, uh, after the first six movies, um, it was years until Disney took over and released, what was it? What was the first one they released after Force that? Awakens. Force Awakens, yep. And I remember that day we went to a midnight release. Were you, remember, was it you there? Were you there? Yeah, was I was. I've been on me, my mum, Kilmarnock. Me, my mum. Come on, look. Me, my mum. Yeah, yeah, we, we talked about this. You were on a different screen because it felt ah, four right, screens. Yeah, yeah, right. So me, my mum, Laura. No, Laura didn't come. It was me, my mum, you. My dad, maybe. And Uncle Brendan. And we all went and it was midnight release. Looking forward to it for years. Your dad's obviously grown up with Star Wars. Mm -hmm. um, and we're just sitting there. The full screen's blank. And then all of a sudden... Yeah, it is. It really is. is. And you watch videos on YouTube all the time, and like, every time that happens, yeah, you just amazing. you just feel it's like the first note, the the, the yellow, the real, and it's like goosebumps. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, it, man. Mm -hmm. Star Wars. So yeah, I hate nice. when people talk in the cinema make the slightest wee noise. But when that came, you know, when they come on, I will miss it as well because obviously the last one was mm -hmm. last year. Yeah, but when that happens and everyone's cheering and you know, whipping, oh yeah, yeah it's, you need it. Yeah, it's, 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 it just it fills you with joy. Then it's just amazing. Yes, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so what we were going to talk about is how the school. Did it? How the school. Did it, eh? Now I don't I exactly know for sure. This is just uh, based on uh, what people spoke about on the internet. But to make the scroll, they actually had to film it. It would be like four foot long and a foot wide, and they would have to film it absolutely so dead like... on the button. You know, so it would be maybe like the length of this table, right? And then maybe even the width of the table as well, and they would have to, you know, wow. film that mm -hmm. perfectly mm -hmm. with the exact like text. Yeah. And they couldn't they, any wee bump, you know, they would have to reshoot it. Mm -hmm. And it was saying there when I was looking up on it, it was like what was that, a two thousand frame take, which takes oh. days to yeah, make. That's a lot, yeah. And if you were to make one mistake, we'd yeah, have process on those takes. You'd mm -hmm. have to go right back to the beginning. That's crazy. They, like, they well, why would they think at one point? Do you know what will they? We'll make a four foot long, one foot wide thing, and it'll take days to do it, and it's just open and seen, open, open no, see. credits. Or see, see when you see when you really think about it though, how much of a genius move was it? Because that is, class. but like we've just talked about, that mm. is the defining factor of Star Wars. How would they know that? Though? How would they think? Right, they this will be this will be our brand basically. This will take off. This will be the biggest thing ever. <laughs> just Let's randomly. just do the, the biggest we can do. I, yeah. I don't know how they how they do that. How how they come to that conclusion. Oh, and today, like, class, but... they could do it. See, with the old, uh, the kind of newer films, like, starting from, you know, like Phantom Menace all the way through up yeah. until Rise of Skywalker. 1999, Phantom Menace. 1999, yeah. 
they could have easily just put it through the computer, like in an edit oh, software. Yeah. Easily, and just, yeah. just replicated it because there'd be so many, mm -hmm. you know, stuff that you can make out of it, yep. like wee stencils that you could use. But easily, yeah. They still do it practically, mm -hmm. like, so they don't lose the effect. And if you yeah. watch it closely, <clears throat> you can actually see, like, the letters. Yeah, they're they're a bit shaky uh, yeah. as it moves up. That, that's the best part about it, though. Like, you can actually... It, yeah. I think you would see the difference, I think, if he did it in Could, a... Could you imagine being the guy having to reel that up? How nerve-wracking it would be. <laughs> <I know. laughs> like, all the all the full production team, George Lucas, everyone. So the first one, yeah, okay, you make a couple of mistakes, it's alright, no one's going to get crazy. But if you imagine Return of the Jedi, mm. <laughs> stand at the guy, the, right, it's going to be you, mate, it's your turn this week, and you're like, oh my god. <laughs> It's, it's like the, the fourth day. Yeah, he's still going. He's still going. Yeah, he's still going. 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 He's that oh, would be, I don't know, like, that would be the most nerve-wracking thing ever. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but when you used to do like the, the egg and spoon race at school, like, you were, <laughs> there's you a horrible shakes. feeling that goes through, maybe you're like, yeah. I this. It's like, uh, I just sit there for hours, maybe. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they don't do it all. I think there's higher stakes <laughs> than, the, than the school egg and spoon race. <laughs> 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 that, was, that was Matthew's highlight. <laughs> that was my highlight. But yeah, it's it must be nerve-wracking, yeah. and that would be terrifying in every way. They are, it's a robot called R2. So like the actual, like Star Wars R2, like they named after Star Wars Yeah, R2. it's named, they weren't subtle about it at all. NASA made this robot called R2, it means Robonaut 2. Right. So it's a, a robot that's in space, just like R2-D2, but it's got the shape of like a... a so it's like a humanoid robot. Aye. Uh, and it just, it fixes stuff in space and um, kind of goes about the space station and um, satellites and all that and does like work on them and stuff like yeah. that. And so it's, does it do like work that's probably either... Tedious or too dangerous for the astronauts mm -hmm. to do, so it uh, just does exa it Exactly, and it's got like hands and everything, and oh, that's like cool. it's, it's that's really, really cool. cool. I'll put a link to it, and you can go and see what the robot looks like. I'll put a, a, a picture up as well, so yeah. you can see it. Um, as a wee video that shows you moving about. Nice. It's really cool. Um, is it controlled remotely? Yeah, or is yeah, it like, they control it remotely. Right, so it's, it's, not automatic. Automatic. So it's not like fully autonomous kind of thing. No, but they're getting to that. But they're getting to that stage. I think. Um, I think they. You, There'll be certain tasks that it's already programmed to do, like very basic tasks, like tasks mm. that needs to Like, see if they press a button to do something. It'll do it. It'll do it, but right. it can't do it on it, so it doesn't but think, you can't... but that needs to be done. Right. Ah, so it's not like fully autonomous, mm. but it's like autonomous just to a certain uh, level. Mm. So it's like the it's like the Tesla cars, like you yeah. still need to hit a button to tell it yeah. already. But, but they're actually point. getting to that point. But it's fully autonomous. Well, it's fully autonom autonomous. Wow. They're, they've got aircraft that are fully autonomous. Aye, so another one is, see when the, the TIE fighters and the... And the Battleships have wars in space. They've got their lasers, guns, and their <laughs> yeah, um, their blasters, the stormtroop blasters, and stuff like that. Yep. So they're getting closer to that as well because uh, an American battleships have actually got a laser weapon system called it's called Laws, but it can shoot down like drones and incoming missiles just wow. through heat. It's just a big laser beam and it shoots it down through heat. Um, that's intense. So I mean, that's imagine, that's imagine pretty cool. Imagine the that thing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> if these lights are bright enough already. <laughs> <laughs> the heat. Oh, the heat, I know. It's I know, nuts, it's man, man. Uh, So, I think it's time to, to bring on the moment everyone's been waiting for, possibly. I don't know. Please tell us if you like the donut tasting. If you don't, we'll just eat the donuts throughout the video. Yeah, if but if you like the donut tasting in the ranking system, then please let us know. Mm -hmm. But it's been a pleasure to have Matthew with us. It has been. Thank you for having me. And yes. appreciate it. we will. Well, like he's. Channel in the description, yeah. both these channels, Matthew Coleman and Movies and Milk. Mm -hmm. And it's well, Movies and Milk. Yes. If you, uh, if you ever go to his channel, you might see us eventually at some point. Yes, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll just keep doing collabs time. because... Yeah, because we like talking to Matthew, we're good friends. Yeah, I, I think we like the same stuff like Star Wars and yeah. different movies, mm -hmm. movie franchises. They talk about like the movie kind of side of it, we talk about the techie kind of side of it. Very similar channels, we have some sort of food or beverage mm -hmm. alongside our, mm -hmm. our videos. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, so... On to the actual donut testing, Matthew. Mm -hmm. I'll let you do the honours. On okay. you go, my friend. I'll take the middle one. On you go. And then I'll just take this one here. How are you for crummies? Crummies everywhere. <laughs> okay. Mm. Mm. That's nice, by the way. I wasn't expecting it to be that moist. I think that's better than the, the thing we won. The, oh. the dairy milk one we had last mm -hmm. week. Was it last week, week four? Mm -hmm. 
say controversial opinion. I'm not a big fan of Oreos. What? Neither is Alice. Alice is not a fan of Oreos. I would rather eat this donut than an Oreo. Just on really? Some. I would, genuinely. Mm. It's nice. Yeah, it's it's, it's really nice good. And and like, you haven't even got to the cream in the inside as well. No. But, um, mm. yeah. Yeah, you would see the cream. Mm. By the way, that coupled with the milk. Mm. Full fat. Okay. Full fat. Semi skimmed is nice, but mm, full fat. The real stuff. I'll go. Oh, let's also congratulate Reese on getting married mm -hmm. on Sunday. I forgot to mention that. Thank oh. you. Well done, mate. How's it feel to be married? Um, not so, not not very different to be fair. No, no. no. That's good, isn't it? It's good, but I was, I was I was expecting it to be dry, but it was actually yeah, because because mm -hmm. normally when you buy a donut out of a packet that's been sitting like these donuts, they're not fresh. Obviously, they're they're shipped to. We bought it in Asda, so it's like shipped to Asda and then it's sitting probably for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. You're expecting it to be bone dry and kind of not very good, but that one's really moist nice. actually for, for what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give it a 5 out of 10. Also, just give it if you like Matthew in the videos, um, please let us know because and we also rate like him Matthew. 1 to 10. Because <laughs> we also like Matthew in our videos, he's a good guy. Um, but yeah, so Nathan rated 5 tech donuts mm -hmm. out of 10. Um, I'm going to rate that 6. I quite like that donut. Sure. It was good. What about you, man? See, I think you guys are more into your donuts than I am. I will have a donut, but I'm not, you know, you the first one out of it. Sure, you this is you came thing. on to take donuts, and you don't like donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching Take Donuts this week. Um, remember to like, subscribe, and also to subscribe to Movies and Milk and Matthew Coleman. So if you like any merch, we have merch available. Mm -hmm. We've got a Take Donuts t-shirt, so we're wearing them next week. Yep. Also, uh, we have a blog. We have an Instagram, a Twitter, and a TikTok, which will be coming soon, we promise. Yeah. Also, if you really like us, you can buy us a coffee on buymeacoffee.com. We'll put a link in. It's always there. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys next week. See ya. Matthew, say bye. Say bye, Matthew. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>